Adam Kirsten with tips and techniques from Unfinished Woodco. And today's tip is how to create distressed finishes with tiny wooden blocks. Distressing is so much fun. You can distress almost anything. You can distress furniture, you can distress cabinets, you can distress any kind of farm sign that you ever created. Distressing takes a simple project and moves it up to the next level. It adds character and warmth, and it's like it's like your project came out of a vintage barn or a, or a unique, wonderful antique store that you just stopped at. Distressing is so fun and easy. Let me show you, let's get started. All you need to distress is paint and a wooden block. To create this wooden block, which should become a basic in your paint studio, is get a scrap piece of wood, about an inch by an inch, but it can be bigger, it can be a little bit smaller, and just make sure one side is sanded smooth. That should be a basic in all paint studios. So, my all-time favorite paint to distress with is folk art chalk paint. Chalk paint sands incredibly, it base coats incredibly. It is the perfect paint for this. So I am gonna take a little bit of the white chalk paint and I am going to put that on my palette. So the key to using the block is you are going to pounce into your paint and then you're gonna pounce a little bit next to it. You do not wanna remove all of the paint, but you do not want a bunch of drips dripping off of there. So you're in your paint and then you're out right next to it. So when you are distressing, you wanna have a very light grip. You want to be perfectly even with your project. You don't wanna be at an angle. You don't wanna be angled that way. You wanna be perfectly even with what you're distressing. Another thing you wanna do is you want to always distress your edges. You don't wanna ever start in the middle. You don't ever wanna go in a circle. You wanna work on an edge or with the wood grain. So with a light grip, you don't wanna mash it on there and pull it. You wanna just very lightly line up with the edge and you want to skim that wooden block along the edge of your project. Then going on the inside edge, you wanna just skim that wooden block along the edge. Oh my gosh, see how it creates all of that distressed, chippy paint just by running that block along that edge. So I'm gonna go back into my paint again and I'm gonna dip it off. Again, you don't wanna take all your paint off, but you don't want too many drips. Now, when you're working on palettes, here's another tip. Never start in the middle. Never start anywhere but the edge of your project. So going at the edge of the seam of these two pieces of pallet wood, I'm just gonna flat to my surface, skim that right along the crack of that wood. See how all the texture in the wood just picks up chunks of the paint, which again, looks like this has been sanded and weathered when really it hasn't. We're just using this wood block. I'm gonna show you again on this next crack. Never start in the middle, but start on the edge and very lightly, again, do not apply too much pressure. Pick up more paint as you need it and then start on the other edge. Just skim that lightly across your surface, creating all of that distressed look. Okay, so that was on a palette board. Let me show you how to do it on a white surface. So this was a llama that we just painted. Another way to distress is with folk art wood tint. You can distress with absolutely any paint. But my all-time favorite paint is this folk art chalk paint, folk art wood tints, anything that goes with the folk art line. So this is the wood tint. I'm gonna put that on my palette. You can see it's a stain, so it's a little bit thinner, but that is perfect. It still distresses perfectly with the wooden block. Here's a second wooden block. This is one that I've just used with dark colors, but again, that side is sanded very smooth. So you are just gonna dip your block in once again, Remove a little bit right next to it, not all of it, but just remove some of it next to it. And again, the tip I told you before, always start on the edge, never in the middle. So on the edge, staying flat with your surface, you are just gonna lightly skim across the outside edge of your painted llama. You're just gonna kinda go around that, picking up paint as you need it. 
But look at that. See how it creates these weathered edges like underneath the white clean llama was old brown barn paint and you sanded it or it weathered or it sat in a barn for years and the white chipped off. Not in this case, you're adding what would normally be chipped paint. So you are just working around those edges and you cannot mess this up. If you like a heavier distressed look, you just do more of this. And if you like a very, very soft distressed look, you do less. So what you can also do is this is the area where I stenciled. If you wanna add a little bit of age and distressing to that, you just lightly skim over that area. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more of the stain, but you just lightly skim over that area. And what it is doing is it's just adding so much character, so much dimension to your project. Now that you've seen how easy and fun it is to distress, you are gonna wanna distress everything. In fact, we just completed a video where you're gonna distress this llama. So you guys, look out for more tips and techniques videos. And if there's any specific ones that you want, put them in the comments below and we'll get to it. Improv, improv, F, F, F for improv. Improv. <laughs> I froze. Mm-hmm. <laughs>